everybody have y'all ever had a tool battery that went into overheat function in other words the batteries got too hot and it shut down what's well, commonly a much smaller version of this by metal disc by metal switch and like this one here it's buried let me get a light on that it is buried right in there you see a little white temperature paste that's in there and it goes up to the little board and it breaks the contact and if the contact is broke, it doesn't allow power to go through to charge or, in most cases, power to come out. All right, I have a battery here that I want to show you all something. This is a DeWalt battery, 5 amp, and it has a different behavior. So a lot of this, I looked all over the internet for overheats and quits working. Overheat won't work. Overheat won't charge. I didn't seem to get many answers for it. Um, a lot of it was, you know, the uh, thermal sensor in them would fail. Well, put it on there and let it sit for eight hours and it'll come back. I didn't do that either. So here's what it's doing. Let me show you right quick. This is what I would push it down. This is what a normal battery will do. It goes in standard charge cycle. Okay. And this is what this one is doing. And I'll tell you a little quick story here. Boom. Now, that battery is five days, six days now since this event happened. And that's all it does. Now, according hot or cold delay and that spent four days three days almost four days on the charger in that came back out here uh, yesterday pulled it out put it back down 18 20 hours later they said in eight hours it'll reset doesn't do it okay so let me show you what they have inside of them and why there is a failure point it's basically a fusible link type failure point in these on purpose um, not all of them um, in this one's case, uh, it will be that thin piece of metal, get it on there, right? See how that's soldered off that tab? That right there will break away. Okay, you're getting more info? Now, I want you to watch. This one here is, that switch down in there is a Black & Decker battery, and I've got it removed, so I'll show you by just hooking it up what it does. Blink, 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 blink. I'll turn this torch thing back off here. That's all it does. This is what it should do. This is what it does. All right, so what it's doing is it's sensing an overheat uh, condition right there and just total failure or battery failure. Now, it doesn't have a battery failure. They've all been tested. They're fine. Okay, now let's get over here. Over here, I have a aftermarket replacement battery that kind of did the same identical thing. What I was doing is I was taking that saw, and you can tell what's got a little heating there. I took that saw and I was cutting lengthwise on a four foot two by six and to split it in half into a pair of two by threes. This one quit and I'm like, oh hell, you overheated. That's happened before. And I went in and got this one. Well, before I even got through the rest of the board, it quit. Okay. Now I've got two of these that are dead and I don't got another five, five amp hour. I've only thinking I got some 2.5s. That's not good for that saw. They don't like it. Time for checking them out. All right, let me show you what I found here. This is the replacement battery. And if you look here, let me show you here. You can maybe see the little bitty lights in there. And this is the only thing you'll see come up. You see that little glitch? That little glitch? I'm holding the button all the way down. Well, that's just some capacitance voltage that's stored in this little board. Okay? Now, look over here. It got so hot, it melted its solder joint. I figured, oh boy, that could be relative. Let me open this one right quick, and it's just four number 10 security screws. I've got two of them out already. And a bit right here. And I recommend you get one of these. You really want one of these. And I'll turn my solder and iron on, kick it up to my typical about 340 and Celsius. And um, we're going to get working on these. This one here is probably what I have found years ago. And the same result. Maybe you can see the little quick flicker. Basically, you can't hardly see it. But it's a tiny little flicker. The camera don't really want to pick it up too well. There it went. A little bit less bright as that one. Now, I'll show you the voltage here. And you'll see that the battery bank voltage, whoop, there we go, is still perfect but it shorted out see 19.8 okay but it got hot and melted that solder 
Now it's kind of a good failure point if you have to have it. Let's get this one open right quick. I'll come right back. Okay, and right upon opening it, you can pretty much already see what we're probably going to find. It is that material melted in half. See it? Right there. And the solder joint didn't give way, but you can see where it softened up enough to pull that back, because it was right there. You can see where it was soldered at. Let me point that out. Right there. It was soldered up to there, and you see how it drew itself back a little bit? And look how it kind of heated that wire up, shrunk it. Well, we're going to check these. Now, these are Panasonic batteries. And you know, it's funny. These come with different batteries. All of them do. These are uh, Sanyos. These are Panasonics. Um, I think that one over there is um, Nathung, <laughs> whatever the hell that is. All right, so we're going to go ahead, and I'm going to just put this in here. And you're not going to get a reading out of this, but you'll reach back here where the battery's actual reel. And we'll get a reading on it. So you see where I'm connected here. There we are, 19.9 volts. Come over here to where it should have something. And you see what it's doing? It's only picking up enough voltage through the balancers, through these balancers right here. So these are your battery charge balancers, your BMS, your battery maintenance uh, management, sorry. And the balancers are the only thing feeding the power in, and they're only feeding it in through this forward set. This would be the continuation of the full voltage. And then, of course, balancers are not going to give you any amperage. Got it? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a piece of wire across that. Now, of course, I'll get this cleaned up. And we're going to put a piece of wire across that that's all solderable material. And using some uh, 6337, which is a little more uh, pliable for what we're doing here. And it does take a little more temperature because it's got some different antimony in it. We will get this soldered up and we'll have a full power battery again because, as you can see here, and of course, we don't want to get it that hot anymore. So I'll put that wire across. You see that? 19.9. And then, of course, um, I can take and just poke something in here and bridge that power. And now you're at about 80 plus percent charge. See? And the same thing over here. This is, to, this is what you need to be looking for. Because you can open this battery up and go, what? No, it's not burned. I don't see anything crispy. Time to order a new battery. Well, maybe it isn't, okay? Um, <laughs> so I'll push that down with my finger there. Get contact there. And there you are. I'll let off of that finger. And there it is, okay? Same reasoning. but And this one also will show 15 volts because it is, you see the little the BMS lines for the ba uh, battery balancing? It's not picking this one up, but it's getting all the rest of them up here, and you're showing 15 volts. So you're like checking a probe, and you're like, what the hell? It's only so much. See, watch. I'll take that off, and there you go. It's missing a whole set of batteries, and it's missing all of its amps because it's just not going to carry anything through that 28-gauge wire. And thank God we didn't try, okay? Now, the tools normally won't fire off unless they got the amperage to make them start, and they didn't burn the wires trying them out. There we go. So we're going to get that two put together, and we'll have this all fixed up and ready to roll. Now, over here in this one's case, this is not a very difficult fix. We just want to get that wire down there where it's a little bit more manageable in our setup here. I'll probably take something and put it on here. Here we go. So we got that wire down there, and we're just going to push down some solder on it. I'm, I'm doing this one-handed, guys. So I'll get this hot enough. I'm going to pause until I get it hotter, and I'll put a clip on that and make it easier. All right, now I've got that propped down, and uh, what any good law-abiding hillbilly uses is a piece of duct tape. So I've got that set up, and I've got a patch wire for this one here. And before I do this, I'm going to show you a way to test... Now, this is a test that's going to tell you whether or not you just had a bulb failure or your little cycle test or whatever's failed. Um, you're going to take, and for positive and negatives, and properly the same way. See, this is kind of reversed. There's a plus over there. That's the negative over here, up over there. And you'll take your, your uh, just a set of jumper wires. It's not going to hurt nothing. And then that way you can look and see if this test light still works. See? taking the power from this battery and basically run it to the test light 
and it's not feeding any back into these batteries and since it's already balanced it's not going to hurt this one if you do that okay so i basically can take a say a uh, five amp hour one of these batteries and kind of boost up a couple of these if there's some small ones just by using another battery they just self-balance you'll lose a little bit of that one and gain a bunch in the other ones if that's ever an interest all right so now coming over here i'm going to have kira hold this here and we're just going to take and i'm going to put a good case of soldering back into this so i want to make sure that it's got a good bed of solder because you don't want a loose piece of that solder working its way around anywhere in there and i'm going to hold that for a second get it nice and heavy bedded and now you can see it didn't have that much on it to start with blow a little air there all right so now that battery come back over here is back in action and we'll do a test on them both here in just a second with this saw over here now as far as this battery is concerned the first thing i want to do is i want to go ahead and tend my wire let that rosin core get into that wire there and then i'm going to tend my parts so I'll put some solder on my parts down here so that we have good adhesion let that get over there and cool off and now what i've done is i've scratched this real well and that rosin is going to get rid of some of that old burnt plastic. It likes to bubble it off. See that? And then, now you could use just a solder link in here. It's not going to, you know, hurt it. But I have a preference for actually putting a piece of patch wire in, okay? So now you can see that that's been bedded on both sides. And this is a probably less than a year old DeWalt battery this happened to. And then I'll just hold that wire down in there. Get that solder nice and embedded in it. You see that? I'm going to do the same here on this side. Let that other side harden up a little bit. And then I'll put some extra feed in here where we're going to cross into all of this. Basically, if you're using the right solder, this in, and this is the uh, Radio Shack stuff, you're not going to have any problems with it. Okay, so now we got them all joined together there. All right, then we'll just cut the excess off. Of that I'll put that back in there and turn it down but now you can look down here and that battery is back in action no little flicker or nothing we're gonna take these over there and throw them in the charger get their cases on them right quick oh, yep springs in there y'all make sure you watch for that spring in them and I won't even seal these up with the screws yet because I want to put a pad inside of there so that if that ever breaks loose, it won't send pieces around inside the battery. So let's go over here. And I'm going to take that battery. And now, look at that. Blink, 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 blink. It can only mean one thing, right? Yeah. All right, let's get the other battery right quick. Item A scratching her butt. Okay. And we will carefully put that cover back on. If I can get something back on. These are kind of lined up. With, oh, <laughs> hold on. Hillbilly tape, guys. I guess I wasn't that well of a good hillbilly after all, was I? All righty. So, put that one back on. There we go. The spring's holding it there. And we're going to walk that over. And we're going to put it in this one's charger. Same thing was done to that. Now look. Get all your batteries back. Or your, get all your screws put back in. And you've repaired it. So, pretty simple fix. Don't throw them away. Don't give up on them yet. They might not be dead. All right, y'all seen that? You seen the little test? So you can test that little light to see if it's something the BMS has failed because that kind of will give you that idea. And most of the time, if a battery fails, you're going to see some real deformed effect in these cases. So if they're not deformed and they're not smoking, take them apart. See if your wires may be loose.
All right, we've got the DeWalt already charged. We're going to pull it loose. I'm going to give it to her. Pretty simple. See how that blade? Look how that blade got burnt. It got wedged or something, didn't it? Mm -hmm. But it definitely, I think the wood was closing in on it, pinching it, and that's what uh, caused a super high amp draw. And we'll go ahead and pull that one loose again, pull it loose here, and take a look. Everything's fine. Pretty easy fix. We'll grab the other one right quick. It just finished charging. That was quick, wasn't it? And she can give that one a shot. And you'll see that it works. fixed. All right. Now, the initial problem that was caused was probably caused by that blade pinching, not the battery. That has been a really super, super battery. I've got, actually got literally um, probably about another eight or ten cuts, maybe even as much as 20 sometimes out of this one. But that one is a year old. And this one's about two or three months old. So balance-wise, they're about the same. All right, y'all be good. I'll put a link to that battery. And y'all definitely get you one of those because you cannot work on stuff like this without one of those. Full kits. All right, look below the video. I'll put that too. All right? Bye. Y'all be good. That's pretty easy to do, ain't it? We're all good.